Welcome everyone. We are on week eight of our study of the nine fruits of the spirit. Um, we have been together that long. Wow. Um, so week eight is going to be gentleness and we are using a devotion series by Robert Strand um, to, to guide our lessons for the five lessons that we'll do or five um, reflections, things like that. So every week I share um, or every session, I share what Robert D D Strand has listed as um, kind of our guide, so to speak. And then we go into our scripture and then we go into some reflection on the scripture and then some application for our personal lives. Uh, so welcome if you haven't been with us before. We're so glad you're here now. Uh, I'm so glad. I, I I feel like we, because we're just all brothers and sisters together in Christ. And so when I say we, though, there's not another person that's doing this. It's just me. But we're doing this together. And you're commenting and sharing um, with all of us. And that is the beauty behind the study. Um, and getting together and diving into God's word and working on our relationship with God. So this series started out as, um, as a way to connect with the youth. Uh, during this time where we're only able to meet virtually and to still have Bible study lessons. And originally it was just going to be kind of like an overall summary of the fruit and just go on and be done. Um, but each individual lesson is so important and so powerful and it kind of builds and builds and builds. And in order for us to transform, um, I felt like I was doing a disservice, not doing all five lessons. So uh, as the week goes on, more will be recorded and added to the YouTube channel. And then on Thursday, I complete the whole playlist and share that out. So uh, stay tuned. You can always like the YouTube channel. And so every day when I put a new uh, post onto the channel, you will get that update and you can go ahead and watch it. You don't have to wait until I publish the whole playlist um, onto Facebook for um, for all to see. Uh, you can like the page and you'll get a notification if that's how you have your settings um, set up. So let's get started. So this week we're talking about gentleness and scavenger hunt challenge. You've got to go find examples of gentleness. What is gentleness? What does it look like? Do you have stories to share? And then share those in the comments. That's what the whole scavenger hunt is about. And it's about going more abstract and not go, oh, can somebody find, you know, a telephone that still has a cord attached to it? And can somebody find something that you would use on the stove to make pancakes with? That's not this kind of challenge. We're going abstract and trying to take an abstract concept and put it into something that we can picture and something that we could possibly touch, even though you can't really touch it, so to speak. All right. So gentleness. Praetos, praeotes. I cannot speak Greek, so I'm probably butchering that, but it's P-R-A-O-T-E-S. And it means gentle, mild, meek. To be an inwrought grace of the soul. Guess what, guys? Gentleness is not weakness. The truly meek person is one whose life has been empowered by the story of the by the Spirit of God, which comes from faith that has been energized by the Word of God. So it comes from the Spirit of God and energized by the Word of God. Those of you who have been watching, you know um, I'm going to share this again. And those of you who are new to us, here it is. So every single one of these fruits of the Spirit, we are given, but we have got to allow the Holy Spirit to truly work within us, and we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, so that way a transformation can take place within us, and therefore expend, extend outwards to others in sharing the love of Christ with others. All right, so gentleness. When Jesus described himself as being gentle and humble in heart, he was not without humility. His was not a life marked by weakness or indifference to others' needs about him. So keep that in mind. Now, most people, when they hear the word gentleness or meekness, they tend to immediately think of a Walter Mitty type of character. And as Robert Strand shares, he says, it's not very desirable. Um... And it's a gross misunderstanding. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness, okay? Michael Drury said, Humility so often seems vaguely desirable, but not really attractive. 
It might get one to heaven, but it won't promote a raise in pay. It sounds somewhat spineless, incompatible with intellect and a vigorous spirit. But in reality, the reverse may be true. I want you to think of some of the figures uh, from history, which we normally associate with humility. And we discover that none of these were of timid nature. So some of the people from history that Robert Strand mentions, Moses, Jesus Christ, Lincoln, Gandhi, Einstein, Mother Teresa, and I'm sure you can think of other names as well as I can think of other names that we could add to this list. Gentleness or meekness is not putting down of self with an affected false sense of humility. Rather, it is a tough, free, confident kind of characteristic. It's very desirable. Meekness is, first of all, our attitude toward God and not man. When our attitude toward God is that of meekness, then, too, our attitude toward others will reflect the same kind of spirit. So, remember I said that transformation that's taking place inside of you, and it's your relationship with God, is that direct link back and forth, and then you start changing, transforming, and then it expands outwards. This is not a spineless kind of wondering about in relationships, but a solid force which causes us to stand and do the will of God in the face of every obstacle. Not just some, not just the ones we want to choose, but every obstacle. This is one of the rarest of all the distinctly Christian graces. This is positively declared to be precious in the sight of God. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4 says, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. That was first, um, yeah, first Peter chapter three, verse four. So go look that one up. Okay. I want to share with you, uh, I guess we call it a poem by Martha Snell Nicholson. It's called His Plan for Me. When I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and he shows me his plan for me. The plan of my life as it might have been had he had his way. And I see how he, how I blocked him here and I checked him there and I would not yield my will. Will there be great grief in my Savior's eyes? Grief, though he loved me still. He would have made me rich and I stand there poor stripped of all but his grace while memory runs like a hunted thing down the paths i cannot retrace then my desolate heart with well nigh will well nigh break with the tears that i cannot shed i shall cover my face with my empty hands i shall bow my uncrowned head lord of the years that are left me I give then to thy hand. Take me and break me, mold me to the pattern thou hast planned. Take me and break me. I cannot tell you how many times I have written about being broken or done a talk or given a sermon about being broken. To God it takes broken things and makes them beautiful. Um, I can't tell you how often I pray for God to break me. So that way he can build me back up again into something that is stronger and um, has a deeper faith and reliance on God. And it's a tough prayer to pray because um, it's going to happen and you are going to break and you're going to crack and you're going to wonder why on earth did you pray that in the first place but then God's going to be building you so much and he's going to turn your life around in such a way that you would have never imagined so I was not going to share a certain portion of this devotion because I really uh, sounded cruel to me in a little in, in a sense of the word because sometimes you want to let wild animals be wild animals However, after reading the poem and talking about being broken and really reflecting on, wait a minute, brokenness is huge and it's impactful and it's important. 
and it can be used in so many ways. So, um, Robert Strand, he used to live in Colorado and he was privileged um, to watch a bunch of wild horses that had been rounded up and culled out of one of the last of the free roaming wild horse herds in America. They were being unloaded from their trailers into a corral. And as they were being handled, there was much wild-eyed looking about, bucking and running about, not knowing what to expect. Totally untamed, unbroken, wild, and of not much value. They were being prepared for adoption. And for a small fee and the proof that you could care for one of these and had some land on which they could pasture, anybody could adopt and train a wild horse or wild mustang to be exact. They were beautiful to look at, he says. And then later, he had the privilege of riding one of these Mustangs, which had been broken, tamed to accept a saddle, a bridle, and a rider. And this horse had been meeked, so as to behave in a certain acceptable manner. It neck reigned perfectly. In fact, it had become meek enough so that a child could ride it. So this wild Mustang. And you think about breaking and brokenness. And there's a thin line, a very thin line, I believe, between breaking something and someone uh, to a point of its cruelty and um, breaking of spirit and such. And then there's like that other side of the line where it's just enough to make this change take place and still hold the power and the beauty that is with inside that is within. However, at no time had this Mustang lost its power to run or carry a rider or to work cattle. What a picture of gentleness or meekness. So the horse was still able to do the things he was born and created to do, but he also knew when it was time to rein things in, so to speak, and to do what he had been trained to do, what he'd been broken to do, and that was to carry riders and be a gentle spirit. So don't allow brokenness to necessarily uh, break your spirit, so to speak, to, to such a devastating point. Um, there's a beauty behind being broken and turning your life over to God and trusting in him and relying on him and allowing him to work within your life and make it something beautiful. And you still have what made you, you in the first place. So don't let go of some of that. I hope that makes sense. I'm, I know that it's kind of, you're like, well, wait a minute, you want me to change, but you want me to say the same? That don't make no sense. Um, because it doesn't make sense. It's hard to put to words. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's just, it's, it's hard to put to words. Uh, I think in some ways it's a, a breaking that makes you stronger and highlights and accentuates the aspects of your character that God wants to, to bring out in you. Maybe that helps make sense. Um, there are certainly some things that change. You definitely need to, you know, okay, I'm done with that. I can't do that anymore. Kind of reflection on that piece, but, um, knowing that fine line. Okay. So there is a fine line and I just want you to realize that I'm not talking about breaking you down to where you're just this nobody that has nothing to do with it. And I think that's where we sometimes get that misunderstanding that gentleness is meekness is wimpy, um, when it doesn't have to be that way. So we have to choose how we're going to act with this breaking, with this becoming gentle and meek. Carrying on. <laughs> the person, well, gentleness is not being a wimp. And I just said that a few moments ago. The person who has been really gentled by God, who is in the image of God and meekness, is the person who is directed by God. The goal in our uh, lesson today is to allow the Spirit of God to work on our inner character. I keep talking about that inner transformation that has to take place. Confronting us to the, conforming us to the image of His Son in all aspects of life, including gentleness and meekness. So that's been the whole eight weeks so far, or seven weeks, and now this is week eight. Um, it is all about 
It's the Spirit of God working on our inner character, conforming us to the image of His Son in all aspects of life. So today's lesson sets the record straight. Gentleness is not to be confused with weakness. So we're going to read from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 17. And this is the account of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the day that we often call Palm Sunday. So I know we're taking, I'm taking it back a little bit as far as church seasons are concerned, but that's okay. We can do that. So Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 17. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage of the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. So again, this was chapter 21 from Matthew, verses 1 through 17. So I encourage you, go pull out your Bible. Dust it off if you haven't pulled it out in a while. Read it, reread it, read it every single day this week if you if you can. Um, get to know God's Word. Get God's Word implanted inside of you because that's where it needs to be. Okay, Not just on the pages of a book or on your Bible app. All right, so let's move into our um, questions that go along with the scripture today. The first question, why is it that many of us tend to equate a gentle person with being a weak person? Okay, so why do we think that somebody who's gentle is also weak? What was the impact that the events of this had on the people of Jerusalem? So now going back into the scripture, what was the impact that the events of this had on the people of Jerusalem. How is the gentleness of Jesus shown in these events? What is the significance of the uses of palm branches at his entering Jerusalem? Name the specific Old Testament prophet who spoke what is written in verse 5 about Jesus' entry into Zion. So go back and reread that and then if you know, comment. If you don't know, go look it up. Um, I, I will all the time, I'll have something going in my head. I'm like, I don't know. I know it's in the Bible, but I don't know what verse it is. So I'll just start typing the words in a Google search and lo and behold, it pulls up and sometimes multiple verses. So there's a, there's a cheat for you. Okay. Why were the crowd so happy to welcome Christ on Palm Sunday and ready to crucify him on the following Friday? What was the motive behind the sudden change as noted in verses 
12 through 13. So if you'll note, we're talking about his triumphal en entry from verse 1 to verse 11. And then it switches to Jesus being at the temple and he enters the temple courts and drives out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So why that sudden change? What was the motive behind that? Think about it. Go deep with it. All right, next question. Many a popular word picture of Jesus presents him as being meek and mild. Okay? So we often picture him meek and mild. You, you remember when we were studying in John, um, and we really honed in on some of these actions of Jesus, and you're like, whoa, he did that? Um, this is one of those examples, okay? So many times Jesus is pictured as being meek and mild. How and why do the actions of Jesus differ from this picture? In the midst of drastic actions, how is the gentleness of Jesus still demonstrated? So remember that wild horse I was telling you about and that the horse was broken so that way um, he could take commands and he could carry riders and he could do work, but that he wasn't so broken he couldn't uh, you know, run wild while he's in the pasture and have that strength and things like that. So think about that. In the midst of drastic actions, how is the gentleness of Jesus still demonstrated? So when he's flipping those tables over and he's angry about all this, think about it. How is his gentleness still demonstrated when he's doing all this? Contrast the reactions of the common people to that of the chief priests and teachers of the law. And why were they so indignant? What are the lessons on gentleness you have learned through this biblical passage? So go back and reread it. Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 17. Read it, read it, read it. What are the lessons on gentleness you have learned through this biblical passage? You probably pull several out. Now, can you think of life situations where this kind of firm, tough love in action is more appropriate than a soft, quiet, gentle approach? Um, I know oftentimes we, we've had so much change in discipline and, and how we uh, discipline children and how we're able to do certain things. Um, and there's a lot of controversy over what is the right way and the wrong way and, and things like that. But discipline's important, and just being your child's friend, sorry youth, um, and Tori will tell you very first thing when somebody says, oh, you're my best friend, or whatever, or she, she hears somebody say, you and your mom are your friends, and she'll go, no, my mom is not my friend. She's told me that multiple times. She's my mom, and that when I get to be an adult, maybe we can be more like friends. So true. Parents, if you're watching this, grandparents. It's our job. It's our responsibility. We have got to do things just like, I mean, we can still be the meek and mild, but we have to remember about being firm and having tough love and knowing when it's appropriate to do the different things. There are times when you're going to need to step back just a touch and you know, each and every single one of your children, like all three of my children, they have to have um, discipline in different ways in order for it to be effective. Um, if I treated each one the exact same, then it's not as effective for all of them. And they're not going to grow into the responsible Christian citizens that, um, I feel like I've been charged to help grow them into. So think about it, your own personal examples. When have you seen those examples of tough love? And, um, sorry, I'm trying to flip back to it. Life situations where this kind of firm, tough love in action is more appropriate than a soft, quiet, gentle approach. Okay? Think about it. Jesus did it. He flipped those tables over. He was mad. All right. So, let's take it into life application. So, that one kind of led into some life application, more reflection, so to speak. Um, but here are our steps, our assignment, so to speak, for um, today, tomorrow, this week however you would choose to approach it.
So the first question, what steps are you taking so that you can achieve a gentleness that is not to be seen as a weakness? Remember, gentle does not equal weak. Meek is not weak. What person or persons in your life are in need of a tough yet strong demonstration of gentleness? And then how will you put this into action in that situation? So think about that person and then how are you going to act on it to give that person that tough yet gentle yet strong demonstration of gentleness? Oh, I feel like I've been tongue tied today, Um, but that's okay. The message is still across. I encourage you still to share your scavenger hunt examples of gentleness for this week. And I look forward to being with you all again soon. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly father, thank you so much. Thank you for a reminder that meek, gentle, that does not equal weak. And ultimately we are working to transform ourselves alongside with you. We're in collaboration with you. And thank you for that reminder that it is a collaboration, that we're allowing the Holy Spirit to to take charge, to take over. So that way we can be transformed and follow who you have chosen us to be, who you've created us to be. And Lord, help us to not put up those roadblocks, to not sidestep you all along the way even when it's hard and Lord help us to remember that brokenness does not always equate to a loss. Oftentimes brokenness can lead to strength and courage and ironically gentleness, the gentleness that you call us to have that you are, have gifted us through the fruits of the spirit. And we thank you so much for that. Lord, I ask that you touch each and every single one of us in the coming days that are watching here today. Lord, I ask that you hear the cries of our hearts and answer in ways that only you understand, but will strengthen us and bring us closer to you. Lord, it's in your son's precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. All right, so see y'all next time. Bye. Y'all have a blessed, blessed day.